What is up, everybody? Brett here, back today, bringing you guys in at the tail end of a battle. I told y'all at the, what is it, two episodes ago now, that I would crush these desert losers. almost said something way worse than losers. That's, <laughs> that's how mad I've been redoing this battle. Um, we are playing as our Light Brigade, our O-Takers run. We had a fight that I knew we could win, and alas, you know... I had to take the fight a few times, but I just did it off camera, and boom. So Rabe's Crusher and Sir Siegfried's Dagger, not to mention some dies, a ton of tools, some crowns, a great attachment, a heavy southern mace. Like, the, the bounty here is unbelievable, and it was worth my patience. Truly, it was worth my patience. We'll take a look at the weaponry in just a second here. Some brothers took some damage. Damage received. Yeah, poor Miguel had to stand in front of... Uh, the the officer character, uh, but he managed to survive. He took basically all of his armor and almost all of his HP and damage. It was a tough one. Who got the most kills? Munu and her hammy, and that's not surprising. We got a great like split right off the beginning. But there you go, guys. The battle is won. Uh, we may go back for the Nomad Conclave. <coughs> Excuse me, I just I just filled up on leftover Mexican food from Cinco de Mayo. And my, my speaking ability may be weak. Do we have anyone who could rock this weapon? I know we just locked in Mudu. No, we didn't lock him in as a hammer user. Interesting. Gaeldric is a cleaver master. Or Hamian is locked in as a sword master. Who do I have that can successfully wield the Sir Rob's or Rabe's crusher? And how good is this really? I'd love to compare it to another two-handed flail but we don't have access to that right now of course at the bottom it has the weapon skills build up minus two less fatigue that's great um and then the dagger here we should compare that to let's just for now we can compare it to a regular dagger but i'm sure it's probably more accurately compared to a rondo dagger so of course more durability i can't get away from the durability stat it's got 10 more dps 10% more damage ignores armor, 10% more effective against armor, and then weapon skills build up minus one. So it's a great dagger. I'd love to see a brother use it. We talked in our last episode about having a, a dedicated dagger bro and how I always like to do that. I don't know who I would use in this squad as a dedicated dagger bro. Oh, we did lose a shield also. Let's hook up uh, Theodore with a, another shield. We have here... Ospin is almost certainly going to be a dedicated shield bro. Probably a throwing master. Though he's pretty much as good as some of our other uh, backline bros at using range stuff. Anyway, we got to distribute these weapons. Who are we giving this stuff to? Um, Miguel here wouldn't be terrible. He's got pretty good melee skill. We've also already got him pretty well kitted out in terms of the actual stats on his armor uh, of course he needs to be recuperated he needs to be repaired up a little bit but yeah I think I think that's the play Miguel the crestfallen has joined the ranks of our two-handers and I like it nice core here in the center of bros with shields and then we see yeah, so if you're wondering why don't we have any of our range tools out, it's because of our oath that we're currently taking. And I've got this great southern mace too. That's that's what I'm... Well, heavy southern mace. That's what I'm looking to see if I can also distribute. Um, we, we've got pretty low melee skill on some of these bros. Uh, Columbo might go for it. I think that's fine. And then, man, that machete really needs to go on somebody. The military cleaver. It's, it's too much better than an arming sword not to use. And then for the moment, I don't know if we have anyone who's going to be the best with this. Of course, we should just equip it to equip it, but we will find a bro who will be perfect for this weapon and we'll be happy to have it. Um, What else do we do while we're here? Uh, we're going to sell a lot of the stuff that we just picked up. and with No, don't want to repair that. 
With all the tools that we have, I think it's worth our time to repair a lot of the equipment in our inventory for selling purposes. The plated Nomad mail is probably better than something we're rocking. See, this is a 105, huh? I was about to say, we're probably still rocking patched mail on someone. So let's go ahead and switch that up. And then we do have the heavy metal pauldrons. I keep calling everything heavy right now. I don't know why. But we've got the metal pauldrons. And we've got a couple sets of reinforced male hauberks that we could slip them on. Could just stick it on the footman's armor and make uh, Theodore a little bit tankier. And then the adorned male shirt doesn't have any attachment at all. I'll probably be keeping this for quite some time. What is the fatigue on this? Yeah, I think we just hooked that up. Give that to Otmar. This is now a, a pretty damn good piece of armor. And just like that, we gotta we gotta switch some people out too. We've got a lot of injuries, man. Liebwin is very hurt. Gisbert is very hurt. Yeah, Miguel really shouldn't be in the company right now either. He's not doing so hot. You've got an injury, but you're okay. Yeah, I think this is the squad. And just so you guys know where we're at, equipment wise. Yeah, we're a little we're a little bit not doing so hot. So when we left off last time, we were really just trying to make some money and travel, get to Al Hazra, take some some missions, or even get to uh, Al Hazif, take some missions, and see about helping against the fight uh, in the north. I still would very much like to go to the Nomad Conclave. I'm tempted to try that again on camera, but let's let's pass that. Let's make a little progress. Sorry, you guys didn't get to see the fight. It went exactly as you would expect few good plays here and there. I only attempted it once more off camera and failed. Not so much that I failed as Erhamian got crushed. With some very unlucky rolls, I would say. He got hit like six times in a row. And then this time we fought, and it was a little bit more evenly distributed. So, it's kind of how it shook down. Our tools and supplies... I'm tempted to take this fight. It's not too far from civilization, so I'm expecting it not to be too difficult. Let's take it. Yeah, 10 bros, no problem. Can we see them all? No, there's one guy we can't see. Maybe an officer of some type. He also held back. Could just be another archer. Backliners are going to pass. That way our frontliners can step in. Went for the stun. We didn't get it. I'm going to pass here. The rest of these bros are all moving forward. We're going to get our surrounds. Going to get our line shot. Beautiful. And we step in here even though it puts us at a little bit of a risk. A stun here would be excellent. A decapitation would have been good too. We didn't get it though. And there we go. The last guy is just an outlaw. So because this I think is already kind of under control. We've got some overwhelming odds down there. Let's step forward with Heracles. He can strike in multiple directions. Step forward here with quick draw. Step forward here. And we might be able to pressure the archers. And then here a hit would have been nice. Going to step in there. And we're going to bring Aaron Tier here. And that gives him a bit of a round swing. But he's got to hit two of his own dudes. So I'm, I'm not convinced he'll do it. Let's see what happens. I've been surprised before. Sometimes the, the AI spite against the player is so heavy they don't care. I'm kind of shocked they're not just shooting at Heracles here. Instead going for the... Undoubtedly much harder to hit Anthony and still hitting him at max range and behind some level of cover. It's a good hit. I'm going to say a kill there would be beautiful. And with that, we'll just step forward. We'll whiff that stun. 5% chance is pretty, pretty butts, man. We ignore this this nerd here. This guy's got to go. Yeah. 
Okay. Happy to get that hit. I can't help but feel a little RNG wrecked right now. Step in. Step here. Could drop some dogs. I'll drop one. And I'll drop another here. Let's make sure this guy doesn't get away. And because I know I can drop them directly into combat and they're not going to be running around getting themselves killed in bad positions, I'm safe using them in this way. I don't think the AI will target them. I was going to say, Erhamian's in trouble. This guy could hit him and kill him. Thankfully he missed. This one guy holding us up is a little annoying. I was about to say, we need to start bringing the pain here. And we're going to step in. Step in. We pass here. Okay. Nice to land and attack. This weapon scares me a bit more than the others. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to step here. Now, I don't need to fight with our Hamion anymore. Uh, I think we just pull him back. That's the safe. That's the safe play. A little bit annoying that two of our strongest bros are dealing with archers. But like Tupac said, that's just the way it is. And hopefully they do us proud. Try to land a stun, and we do. Thankful. I'm very thankful for that, because, man, the AI is deadly with those pole, pole maces. They hurt pretty bad. Alright, let's see where our other doggo goes. Maybe here. Maybe it tries to come up here and get a little wild. Alright, got the stun on Otmar. I'm going to prioritize by deadliness here, and it's definitely the pole mace, dude. I don't need any additional help here. Okay. No more hits from him. See if we can get lucky, get another stun there. Nah. We'll just pass. We're going to step in, better surround, all that song and dance. Is the dog going to double kill? Don't do it, doggo. Yeah, let's see who gets crushed. Excellent. Excellent. And I mean, the fight's over now. I'm not expecting to get even more legendary loot from this location. Two is plenty for one episode. I'm always a little bummed, though, when I get, like, some mediocre, unique weapons. I would take basically any piece of unique armor any day of the week over the unique weapons. Very rarely do I see one of the weapons in the game that I'm like, holy crap, I have to have that. And I meant to step here and attack. Most of the time, they're like, oh, okay, I guess I can fit this in. I want to say they're always superior to the tier 3 counterpart. So it's never a case of like they're strictly worse or something. But sometimes they're so like much, like they're just barely better. That it can be like frustrating trying to find a place for them. You feel obligated to use them because they're sweet looking. So this fight, you know, we're going to make money off of it. It was worth it. We got enough tools and stuff to... uh to compensate ourselves and, and incense we're not gonna be able to sell this stuff in the south uh, we're gonna have to wait till the north doesn't hate us and another attachment another armor attachment that's good that one I'm gonna go ahead I think it also will probably look pretty cool let's go ahead and put that on Theodore's armor now it's looking pretty sick it's a 210 fair enough and this 
I just, I, the only reason I haven't equipped it is because I, I kind of don't want to forget that I have it. But I guess we'll just stick it on Otmar. Plus, if a brother dies in a major fight, then I feel like obligated to continue the fight. I don't want to have the potential to lose it. That would also suck. But we got some levels here. Ospin. Interesting bro. Who just continues to get way better range skill than every other stat. Um, we'll take the 3 in Fatigue. And there's a few ways we could go. I, I wouldn't mind getting just a bit more hit points. I wouldn't mind getting a bit more resolve. Getting more of that 50 mark. And I think we will. We'll take the natural 4. And then here... Boy, his, his skills are so low. I feel like fast adaptation is something we, we started to consider for this squad as well. Uh, just as we have for our other group. On, on, on our guys who have like 50, 60, you know, melee skill, range skill, like we, we need that. And eventually, Ospin, I think I'm going to make him a throwing master. That way, if I ever get a unique throwing weapon, I can give it to him and it'll just be cool, I guess. Um... But yeah, I mean, he could he could still be an archer of some type, so not going to count that out. That was the only level we got. Once again, our Hamian took a beating. Let's go to Alhazred, try to scope out a bit more of the map while we're traveling. Maybe get a better idea of what our surroundings are like. Interesting to see little islands. Alhazred has an alchemist in armor, a taxidermist in a temple. Let's see if we can make some use of that. There is a contract, a tier one. They've got a heavy Lamellar helmet, which I think is the best helmet they can sell, I think. No, no, no. I think there's one better. This armor looks sick, but unfortunately it's not as good as I want it to be. Um, what is the, the shield slash bear hat tech telling us? It's telling us to sell. It's saying to sell everything and make a ton of cash. Uh, let's see, what else? And I will, I will sell everything. I just want to be a little bit cautious about how I sell. So, the spices, I was totally wrong. Spices, incense, and dye is worth a fortune here. Uh, but they probably produce silk in some amount, so they're not going to really want that. But we're up to 6,400, and we're going to go up a little bit more after we sell these scimitars. And probably even one of these arming swords. Yeah, check that out. And I may even sell more than this. I don't need all of these shields. I don't mind having some, like, backups. And I don't mind being able to switch to kite shields in case of emergency. We're fighting, let's say, a bunch of ranged dudes, goblins, or whatever. Okay. This is probably enough stuff to keep. And I may even be keeping too much. Uh, but yeah, man. And since we're not using our range tools, I mean, our, our ammunition is just going to get stacked up nicely. Could still probably stand to buy some more uh, tools. The prices to buy, not good. For the same reasons they're good to sell. Taxidermist, what do we have? Could make some potions. Poisoned oil. I wish that mechanic was a little bit better in the game. Because I'd love to use it. I just don't think it's that good. And with our money, is there any must-have dudes we need to hire? There isn't. So yeah, I think we just keep it moving, man. What do you need? What do you need? Creatures of an undetermined sort are wreaking havoc. Got it. Let's talk more. This is just a kill what terrorizes this type of mission. That's no-brainer. Especially in the south when some of, like, hyenas or... Hmm. The, the, one of these locations has changed hand. I'm not going to bother reading that. But we could get hyenas or serpents. And instead we just keep getting Nexurs. Which are sort of whatever. But hyenas or serpents would give us materials that are really worthy of crafting. Spending our time and money hunting them down and crafting it. Uh, they make great attachments for armor. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head what the serpent skin versus the hyena stuff does. I could look it up. Uh, but it's good. It's good stuff. That's all, that's all I remember. I would recommend killing them if you get the chance. So who's hurt? Or Hamian might have to take a more like backseat. Might just pull him back here. 
Which is fine, because we should probably huddle a bit around our... Core. Something like this. Tempted to shield wall, but the thing is, man, I used to love shield wall until the AI got really good. It was just like, no, why would I ever jump into your shield wall? I'm just going to wait until your shield wall goes down and waste all of your fatigue. So I kind of stopped doing it. I think here we just pass everything. Spear wall, of course, makes sense. But they tend to do the same thing here. So they'll jump in. If we had shield wall, I'd be willing to bet the AI would have been smart enough to not jump in this turn. It would have waited. Our guys would have dropped their shields. And then at that point, we either shield wall again. It turns into like a game of chicken with the AI, which can be a little unfun. Certain enemies, you want them to be dumb. I consider the Nagzurs to be one of those enemies. Undead of pretty much all variety, you want them to be dumb. It feels more normal. We'll wait here. So here's the deal. We get the kills. We need to step in. But we can do it in a unified manner. Step here. I'd rather just step in there. Give myself the ability to attack with Gildrick. There's, if you guys have ever watched the show Vikings, there's a really sick battle on a beach. I think it's in the first season. Where they do like a shield wall push. It's so sick. It feels realistic. Who knows if it is or not. But there's like a point where they just like run over dudes. You get, you know, you slaughter them in in front of you and just step over them. Very like, I was talking about 300 in the last episode too. Very 300-esque, I guess. Went for the stun, didn't get it. See if we can stun here. That's nice. So here's the deal. Unfortunately, this Nagzurher is going towards Urhamian. And if he does what I think he's going to do, which is step here and eat Columbo, uh, it would be a mistake, I think, to send Urhamian to be the one to deal with that. But let's see. I mean, he's going to get a chance to go before everyone else. He might not. Or he might... I mean... I'm curious. I'm curious to see what he'll do. It's pretty much the only tactical decision left on the map. Yeah, he went to Columbo, and he hit him instead of eating him. Which may be good, may be bad. Don't know yet. It's not a great time to miss attacks. Uh, it's a mistake, man. It's not good to put our hand in. If he had full armor, I'd say fine, we'll wait. Those were terrible, and I don't even have the ability right now to shield wall. Let's see if we can get the yield double, but we didn't. Another hit there might have been clutch. Yeah, this is rough. These misses are what's actually killing us. Yeah, I mean, there's a trigger to be pulled here, guys. We could drop a Warhound. We could get in there, drop a Warhound, I think land a hit. I don't think we can do all of that. I might even be able to jump in here and land like a big hit. Fortune favors the brave. Unfortunately, we are not fortunate. So, either Urhambian or Columbo are going to get wrecked here. We'll see. Happy to have taken that hit to the head. And not to the body. We need our we need our armor to stand up. Yeah, and they're just going to focus fire Columbo. Let's see if someone gets eaten. And that's probably the best thing Urhambian can do for us, sad to say, is just get eaten. That dude's a little too confident. We need to make him knock that off. Okay. We can step here, try to go for the stun. Let 
This is so bad. It's dead, but didn't get the decap. Everyone needs to move up. I underestimated the flank up here, and I overestimated Columbo's ability to hold that. When you consider that our Hamian really wasn't going to be much help. I'm surprised the AI went for that flank. I believe in you, Columbo. Don't die. Yep, die to his bleed. Damn. So, yeah, he's been killed. I think we can do this fight much better. Got to pay more attention to the enemy's flanks. I just, I'm surprised that they, they went for that. Because I feel like we were top heavy, not bottom heavy. Or Hamian being injured is such a bad thing. Maybe we should have pulled him out for someone else. I didn't really check to see if anyone else was doing so great. I mean, none of our bros here are super strong. Like, we've got our two best bros are at the bottom here. I probably should have reordered the formation a bit. Put our Hamian in the center. Perhaps would have been better. Let's see how this works. I think the modification with Mudun here might throw them off. And if they all start going to the top, I think we'll be able to rotate better. I will say this. I, I don't think we need Anthony down here. I think we need Anthony up here. I think that's a good move. It's a weird one, but it really plays to us having a, a back line of dudes and trying to get the AI to curve around us. Love to see a spear wall do anything. Nice. I, I think we were correct. Our sort of awkward formation appears to be... Messing up the AI's groove, man. Strike the fear of the Lord into these little ghouls. Beautiful. Running is good. Kills are better. Step here. Nice. Step here. Anytime I want to say the word like nice, I always hear if you guys ever played the game super hot, all I hear in my head is like super hot. Feel free to look that up. I sound like a, a lunatic whenever I just make random references that other people might not know. But if you know it, you know it. Instead of saying something is nice, say it's super hot. Okay. Gaeldrick might be in a bad spot, or, you know, he's perfectly fine. Time will tell. We kind of gave them openings in our front formation, but I don't mind. Our back line is slightly well armored, and that splits up the DPS on some of our bros. Damn. Well, that escalated quickly. The AI is usually not so Johnny on the spot with eating the corpses, but they were this time. I thought this was going well, but this small group of Nexurs is now crushing me. And we need kills, like, today. God, do we desperation dog? No. We do try to land the stun, though. 
We missed an 85%. That hurt my heart mostly. We'll go for the kill to try and get the route. Kill there would have been nice. Just would have freed up some space. We're gonna go for a swing. Happy to get the DPS. We're gonna bring out Warrior. Beautiful. And that's why you bring out Warrior. Strikes fear into our enemy's hearts. And what was looking like a very dark potential uh, situation for us is starting to turn. Gildrick not out of the woods yet. A decapitation there would have gone a long way to get him out of there though. We just need to bring some bros to him. Get him a little help. Uh, there's no advantage to changing this position. Could just drop a dog. May have, you know, taken Theodore's spot, but that's fine. Because I might have moved him up top. But this situation is handled. But now we just need Gildrick to survive, and his armor's almost gone. But he's got 94 HP, man. I about to say, he's going to pay for Mudun missing his attack. I already know. 1 HP. Jesus, man. He just got no luck, man. I was gonna say if we miss again, that's unprecedented bad luck. Alright, I was really hoping some of these kills might affect the battle down here. Yeah, that little step in's not doing it. He's still gonna have two dudes on him. And I've got no other form of rotation other than Erhamian. He's gotta get that kill. And unfortunately, this dude's going to get a chance to swing at him. The odds of him surviving are so low. Okay, I was really hoping the dog would step in here. I mean, he's still got a kill. I'm on, like, the edge of my seat right now. Let's all say a prayer for Gildrick. One of our doggos is going to get a chance to go. Yes! Yes, he's wavering. God dang it. Gaeldrick has to live. He cannot be allowed to die. He's got like the most... Injuries I've like ever seen. Where does it say? I don't say if it... I don't see where it says. He was struck down. This fight is not worth getting permanent injuries on our brother, but we're going to do it anyway. I'm just hoping Gaeldrick doesn't become useless because of it. Uh, now he's got a missing nose. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Gildrick, homie. Missing nose, missing eye, missing ear, broken knee. On top of having a cut arm and exposed ribs. Truly he is a badass. Gildrick Bisbing, the Undying. A name fit for a legend. Mudun has finally hit max level. Let's see what kind of stats we've been offered here. I'll take the three in melee skill. I think here we also take the three in melee defense. And I think we also take the three in maximum fatigue. And call that a day. How we pump his final stats? I mean, we could go straight for hammer mastery. Don't hate it. 
Um, Hammer Mastery and what else? Potentially Lone Wolf. Potentially Lone Wolf. He does have Underdog. He does have Reach Advantage. These things help. Battle Forge helps. Berserk helps. Um, Rally the Troops and Rotation do not lend themselves to Lone Wolf. So that right there, I've kind of already talked myself out of it. Um, he's meant to be in and amongst the formation. Providing Rally. Not off on his own. It's nice to have the utility to send him off on his own. But I just, that's not his deal. He's a helper. Just what do we build in last here? There's options. There's some good standalone stuff. There's nine lives. It's it's good more often than you think it would be. Um, his melee skill is going to be high enough by the time he's done. Um, that fast adaptation's not a great one-off for him. Steel brows, fine. You could go... What's another good one? Just as like a one-off. Fortified Mind, just because he's got Rally. Killing Frenzy, Indomitable. I do like Indomitable. I love Indomitable, especially for my bros that hold the, the, the edges of my formation, my flanks. I'll leave this one. You guys tell me what you think. I may not, you know, I may not do what you say. But definitely tell me what you think, and if you have a good reason why, I'd love to hear it. Right now, I'm leaning, I'm leading towards Killing Frenzy and Indomitable. Um, but I could be talked into something else if there's something here that I'm missing, uh, for sure. So feel free to let me know. Uh, it's not going to be like Bags and Belt. I mean, it could be Recover, it could be Adrenaline. Like, these are good ones, too. Let me know what you think. I am quite interested. Heracles, happy to see a foreign range skill. Thank you. Thank you, gods, for that. Um, actually, let me check real quick. He is a bowmaster. We will be almost certainly making him a dodge nimble type bro. Fatigue, range, skill, and probably continue to pump something like initiative. And then here, taking dodge. Or at the very least, we will be taking nimble. Let's take nimble right now before we take dodge. I think that's a little more useful in that order. Uh, Columbo. Try to help his fatigue out a little bit here. Hopefully we get some good rolls. We did not get good rolls. Um, feeling that a little bit. Let's take the three in fatigue. Yeah, these rolls are pitiful, man. Uh, I don't hate taking some range skill because I could see using him as yet another uh, frontline throwing bro. It fits our kind of game plan that we've been doing. I don't want to take any more HP. His resolve is fine. His initiative is cool. Though it almost certainly won't be relative, relevant rather to his build. I guess I'm just going to take a 2 in melee defense. And then we'll go ahead and... Uh, when when we get a chance, we'll, we'll give him a throwing weapon. But our hammy needs to come out. And so does our boy there. Thorbin can go in. As can Gisbert. All right, let's head back. Man, didn't think those dudes would wreck me that bad. And I'm sort of shocked that we have so many injuries on Gildrick. But the man survives. The dude abides. And we should sell everything here, though the price... I don't know, the price hasn't gone down. Cool. Normally after you uh, save them. Actually, really, there's nothing to sell. That's the worst thing about that. It's like all we got. Did we even get anything? I didn't even notice. Like zero loot for that. Feels bad, man. Make sure we have some food. And we're going to travel here. Once again, we're going to go to Al Hazred. Or Al Hazif. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's happening here? We'll be seeing you someday, they said, spoken softly like old friends. But they meant it. Meant it in only the way enemies can. Them, the Oathbringers. Now standing before you in glinting steel, chins up and weapons readied, a salient of hate, manifest from the untimely demise of young Anselm. You thought you would find them in much larger number, but now only two stand wishing to confront the Light Brigade. One steps forward, you see young Anselm's jawbone dangling from his neck. The Oathbringer nods. I knew it the day we departed that it were only a matter of time until we saw each other again. 
I can see you have been fighting many a battle, as have we. It is clear that young Anselm's prophecies bore such weight that this world would see us brought together one final time, not robbed of the ceremony on account of some brigand or greenskin. You and I both have been shielded by fate, clothed in the invincibility of one very certain inevitability. Oath-takers, oath-bringers, let us settle this schism once and for all. As young Anselm decreed, choose your finest fighters and we shall see which of us are most deserving of upholding the oaths. Yeah. This kind of sucks because we've got bros who are so hurt right now. I think only Mudun is good to fight. The Oathbringers stand before you, waiting for you to pick your champions. I wonder if this is triggered because we got him to like level uh, 11. I don't know who's in the best shape right now. Or even whose stats might be the best. It'll probably be Aaron Tier. And who else? Can't be in her hand, man. He's crushed. Maybe Theodore? So, we've got three bros going into this fight. I hope I chose wisely. I think I have. Though, these dudes are stacked. Full helm, wing mace, war hammer. Uh, good gear. Pretty scary. We've got smite, which does huge damage to armor. Then we go for that hit. Love that they started me in a like a swamp. That's pretty horrible for me, and they stun me right off the bat. Dogs, dogs help here. Even if they kill him and get confident, I think it's still a win-win for us. Going for the decap didn't get it, but you know we put one stack of bleed on him. Nice, nice. Happy to see him spreading the DPS around a little bit. Just don't stun me again. God dang it. Going for the decap. Going for the decap. <sighs> okay. Down he goes. Better surround for us. The doggo will help. Christ. Mudun is just getting stun locked. This is a dangerous step in. We don't really need him, I don't think. Probably even should have dropped another dog here with Theodore. Get a five-man surround. But yeah, all we really needed was for Mudun to connect one more time. Is this stupid? Maybe. Might have been better to go for a hit, try to get the bleed. But getting that dog in the fight is going to make this all the better. He's got a bruised leg. Shield wall means he's less offensive. He's been crushing my head. But our body armor is still intact. This guy dropped his... Did he drop his hammer? Because that would be sick. And with that, we crushed his finger as well. And down they go. And I think we're probably going to get both of their weapons. We did. And at least we got the full helm, which is also sick. I don't know what else we get from this. But what a cool event. Curious, like I said, if it's triggered by reaching max level. Two bodies on the ground and a weight off your shoulders, but you thought it would be different. Not that you were displeased with the results, such that the Oathbringers are no more, but there's something amiss. It is almost as if you put out a fire that threatened your home, only to realize those flames were the only warmth you had in a world of cold. Good riddance. One of your men says and spits on the corpses, staring at the dead. You realize you had become addicted to the hunt, addicted to the challenge, addicted to being strong. You weren't encumbered by a threat. You were weighted with purpose, and now it is gone. Leave when the watchman leans down and picks up young, young Anselm's jawbone and holds it, hands it over. You take it and piece it to young Anselm's skull. It fits with ease, almost as if it, even in its decay, it had no reason to separate. The men cheer. They cheer the oath takers. They cheer your name. And they cheer for young Anselm, who in death has finally been made whole again. You take one last look at the oath bringers and nod. They had a purpose, sure, but now it is fulfilled. May the old gods have mercy on their heathen souls. So we lose his skull, but we gain his skull and jawbone. Which I'm just assuming is an even better version. Who do we have that on? It's not on Mudun. No, it probably was on Mudun. Yeah. And he deserves to wear it, and it looks sick.
straight up pimp chain. And I think... Where's our boy or Hamian? We pass him the full helm. Aaron Tier, let's go ahead and give you that helm. The wing mace is a good, I mean, it's a good weapon, man. We should definitely give that to someone as well as the Warhammer. Just such poor stats on some of our bros. It feels bad. I'm trying to think who we could give the wing mace to. We don't necessarily have to give it to someone. And we could always just save it for, you know, a future bro that we might pick up. But very nice. And its ability will start combat at confident morale if permitted by mood. Sweet. Sweet indeed. Unexpected, man. Very cool. Good riddance, he said, and spit on him. Let's go see what's up at Al Hazif. Maybe there'll be some uh, fight we can get into. We can use these dudes as fodder to protect ourselves. Wouldn't be surprised to see some southerners out here in the middle of nowhere. Maybe the lo there's a location down here that they're going to attack. It's kind of random that they would go out in the middle of nowhere like that. Alright, we've got a ton of cash. Nothing here I have to have. We have a sandstorm. Howling sandstorms have engulfed the city and hinder traders both from entering and leaving it safely. Goods are becoming more rare and prices higher. That sucks. Plus ambush trade routes. Yeah, that sucks. What is the price to sell though? The price to sell is incredible. 23 says the uh, the shield. So we'll probably sell something. And because I've wanted so badly to make a dagger wielding character. I'm tempted to take this assassin. I don't think we have an assassin on this squad, but we are limited, man. We only have two more spots on our roster. Though someone will certainly die at some point. We've got some low tier bros that we are at some point gonna, you know, have a fight where they die and we just say, you know, that's it is what it is. In the later stages of the game, when we're fighting 40 orcs at once. Bros will die one at a time, maybe even two at a time. I generally reload saves it. For sure if I'm losing more than two bros and it's not like a Kraken fight. Kraken fight, you get out of there with two dead bros, you need to be thankful. But I'm tempted, we don't have an assassin on this squad. We were trying to make these guys kind of virtuous, but we've got disowned nobles, we've got thieves. It ended up not being as virtuous as I would have liked. And we had a Gildrick since the beginning as a caravan hand, and I don't think we ever got the, the thing that increases our caravan size. Hmm. But man, I would like a dagger user. Interesting. Though there's no guarantee he has the stats we need. And he comes with a coddle dagger, which is most of what we're paying for here. I'll pass I guess it hurts a little bit but I'm gonna pass the weaponsmith they've got a two-handed scimitar you kind of love to see that hmm anything else I don't think there's anything else we can afford to sell the two-handed scimitar we would give to Gildrick let's see what these contracts are yeah going to fight northern heathens that have taken the oracle Conquer the Oracle from Northern Heathens. Destroy or route enemy regiments in the vicinity. I'll need some time to think about that. I don't mind going do it. And this guy wishes me to travel. Which is just a, an interesting way for us to get out of here. It's almost no money at all. But once we do this, we might not have any reason to stay. I accept this contract. Where are we going? Oh no. It's on the other side of the world. Oh, that sucks. 
Okay, well, you've got choices whenever something like this happens. We're not going to uh, cancel the contract because, honestly, there's nothing else for me to do here, and the whole North hates me. So I'm going to take a more circuitous route and get back to Hakeem Al-Ramal. I just need to make sure I've got provisions for the journey. Let's see. Yeah. It sucks. Everything is super expensive. But we're going to buy it anyway. And if, like I said, there's anything that we need to sell, this is the place to sell it. I'm, I'm going to get rid of this pole mace. I'm tempted to get rid of, like, everything. But I think that's about all I can afford to get rid of. And then now we travel. And what I'm going to do is we're going to take that circuitous route I mentioned. And before we take any fights, we're going to check our bros. Because they are beaten to hell. Okay. I think what we've got going on here is fine. We need to take just about every fight. Take a fight, walk, heal. This is a little dangerous and may not be worth it for us. We just... Our squad is just not very good at hitting and these guys need to get hit. You could probably sum up all of what Battle Brothers is in that sentence. I need to hit these guys, and these guys need to get hit. But even more so than that, they're just going to lockstep and shield wall, and it's going to be very frustrating because our bros just don't have good stats for melee. And in my defense a little bit, you know, I've been trying to take every offensive role I get my hands on. And currently we can't make use of our range tools. Not that they would be great versus this enemy anyway. It'd be okay. But not great. Most dangerous dudes on the battlefield are of course going to be the legionnaires with the two-handed deals. But don't be fooled. The legionnaires with the uh, their tower shields, they're quite dangerous as well. Could have backed up maybe. Might have been interesting. If this was a more life or death type of battle, I would play the hot gates. But anyway, we've got to crush this fight earlier. We're just not even going to win this. We ourselves will be the ones getting crushed. The auxiliary's got to go down fast. That way their numbers don't matter. Gonna step in here. That's a little rough. They'll they're gonna surround the hell out of Columbo. Unless we step up here to help him, but that's not great either. Because now we've just divided the forces, and we may not have wanted to do that. That was huge from Gisbert. He was just an auxiliary, but that takes the numbers down. This guy needs to go. Yeah, we made a we made a little rough fight here. But if we can crush these guys, we can sweep up here and help. It's just the shield wall has already begun and Aaron Tier is already almost dead. So there you go. I mean that's the fight in a nutshell. That's what's gonna happen. These guys are gonna step in, kill Aaron Tier. Not meaning to sound pessimistic, it's just that's what's gonna happen. Very good. This is a case of splitting the shield. Might be the move, but not destroying it in one hit sucks. If you don't destroy it in one hit, it's pretty worthless. A hit there would have been a kill. We step in here to use Gisbert as bait. I'm not willing to give up on this yet. But I'm going to keep it real with you. They are going to kill Aaron Tier. Right about now. We're going to step in. Hope to get that. We got it. God, I would have loved to step in there. I went for a risky move. Yeah. Later, Aaron Tier. Let 
Man, without footwork, there's no way to get out of here. Shocked he's still alive. But he, he will not make it next turn. We, we don't have what it takes to kill the dudes who are threatening him. And we don't have the means to... To get him out of the harm's way that he's currently in. So feel bad, but it is what it is. We'll see how the fight goes. I'll play it out. But part of this is my fault for getting... Trying to be a little creative with how we stepped in and it, it was never going to pay off. All we did was split these guys and we didn't really want to do that. Unfortunately, we don't have the same outs that we do with living opponents. Where sometimes we can fear them by killing their number. That's not going to happen here. Aaron Tier is just going to get smushed. But he's doing us... A amazing service by holding as long as he is oh god and now Anthony is under threat holy crap Aaron Tier unbelievable hold from him good hit there okay and with that Anthony on 1 HP Pierce lung, pierce leg muscles. I didn't notice how close he was to death there. That's a lucky man. Holding on for dear life. To say a kill here, you know, wouldn't quite get us out of the woods, but it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt. Okay. You always hear an Italian, you know, like Italian represented dudes on TV. He's like, it's not for nothing, but that'd be a that'd be a good way to to get him out of here is to clean up these dudes. Oh my God, he's still alive. Can't step him in. Can't risk it. He's just going to pass. And we step in here with Columbo. They can all reach him. So we just need to go for the one we think is... Most likely to hit him. And I I'm super shocked he's still alive. It's crazy. God, I wish if we could get Muldoon to him, maybe that should have been what we were working on this whole time is trying to get Muldoon to him. We're going to bring Anthony close in case we need his DPS. Hopefully we don't. That would mean things are going poorly. That's good. We wait here. Does this hit head? Because I think if we just hit him, we kill him. But we might not kill him, so let's stun him. Oh my god. Are we going to do this? He's not out of the woods yet. But damn, he's close. Holy crap. I think he can... I mean, he can't obviously still be hit. We took him away from some of the danger. Oh my god, Aaron Tear. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap! Well, I already know what this episode's getting called. What a legend. That's how legends are born. I, I'm not a statistician and I don't have this much free time. 
but I would love to know what the odds were. If you accumulate all of that together, what the odds were of him surviving that. All the hits. Add them all. Do, do me a favor if you do not mind. Add together all the hits that he didn't get smashed by. Look in the top corner. I wish I had this open. Hopefully you can still see the odds on each swing. There's definitely a way to do that. Okay. Fortunately, we've got a little awkward positioning here. Go for the stun. Happy to have landed that. Super happy. I may step in here if I need the hit. That guy's got to go because if he goes, we're probably fine. Oh my gosh. I'm like sweating after that. And we did it all for the nookie because at the end of the day, we didn't really get a ton. I mean, these are worth a lot. You know, this is... We're looking at like two grand. That's what we picked up from this fight, essentially. But by the time we sell the helmets and the ancient blade pikes and our ancient gold coins... You know what? It's probably a little more than that. We'll sell these for a good price. Um, it's probably closer to 2500 Maybe Maybe even a little more than that, now that I think about it. If we, Especially if we go right back to where we just were. If we go right back to Al-Hazif, where the prices are insane... I think we should just go right back and sell them. Yeah, that right there, I mean, that was that was all the money. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, eating my words, this is much closer to like... Was it maybe 3200 something like that? I wasn't paying that good of attention. But it was... That was a good haul. That ended up being a good haul. But for the amount of damage we took, the amount of risk we took... Not worth, it's never worth losing a bro for a couple grand in this game. You can make a couple grand, no problem. Uh, and Aaron Tier rightfully leveled up from that. Once again, look at look at my melee skill rolls. This whole time, it's been like that. Okay, I don't know. Some of these injuries might be affecting his HP totals. Yeah. So I don't really know what his max HP for real is right now. I think we take a four in resolve, a four in fatigue... And then, man, maybe a three in melee defense. Just get tanky. And I'd maybe rather have the wing mace on him than the cleaver. And then as far as perks go, his stats are so low, he has to have fast adaptation. And I think we're going to see that with a lot of our bros. We're going to level... Like right now, shortly. Um, here we've got a Bowmaster. Let's just take Nimble on him. Happy to see the foreign range skill. Thank you very much. And then, not a great fatigue roll. Could just take this foreign range defense. Get him over that 10 threshold that I like. And then take the foreign resolve. And then boom, now I don't pump resolve or range defense anymore. Those are fine rolls. And then Aerothorn here. Thank you for the foreign range skill. Thank you for the foreign fatigue. And then this is a very appropriate like initiative pump. And then we definitely want Berserk. <sighs> Man, breathing heavy. Heavy breathing intensifies. Let's get Miguel in here. We haven't even seen this weapon in use yet. Yeah, you gotta come out. There we go. Alright, well let's continue trying to travel. We're pretty much at the end of our episode for today, but maybe I can find us another location, another fun fight to take on for next time before we leave. Hopefully y'all enjoyed today's episode. I'm recording. I was supposed to be going. I might take this one off camera. But I was going to say I was supposed to be going to a uh, UFC fight party tonight. But uh, my buddy who was hosting it, his daughter got sick, started throwing up. And, you know, kids come first. So the party was canceled. But in like 
an hour. He's he's he ordered so much food for the party, and now there's no party, so he's just gonna bring me a giant plate of chicken wings and beignets. <laughs> so I gotta go be ready for that. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it. That's that's my week. That's my that's my weekend plans. Uh, might go see the new Doctor Strange movie too. I'm not a huge fan of most of the Marvel movies. I like them, but I don't think they're great movies. But the Doctor Strange movies really entertain me. I like some of the humor they've been injecting into the Thor and Spider-Man movies. And I think the Doctor Strange movie is pretty similar. But anyway, now is not the time to get into that. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. My name is Brett. Channel is Good Talk Gaming. And next time when we come back, I'll probably have just done this off camera. And we might be back in Al Hazard doing uh, big things, hopefully. But that's it, guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.